Hello everyone, and welcome back to the series where you can level up your Weeb level by learning some trivia on the Japanese culture and language, and some nuances that were lost in the translation of an anime. In this case, for the ninth episode of Onimai. The expression that was used to convey the meaning of people enjoying the Christmas period is with Ishoku, which usually just means one color, but it can also be used when a bunch of people at the same place share a similar intense feeling. You could say that it's a bit in the same vein as saying in English, everyone was painted with the same brush, but not necessarily in a negative sense. It's also often used, like in this case, as part of the sentence, Kurisuma sumudo ishoku. What Miyari used to describe Mahiro as a go-getter in Japanese was with the expression sumi ni okenai. In a literal sense, it comes as can put in a corner, to talk about someone that was unexpected to be that experienced or talented at doing something. The origin of the expression comes from the contrast between something put in the middle of a room versus in a corner. The thing that is in the middle is gonna stand out a lot more and be easily seen, as opposed to something put in the corner and in the shadows of a room. And you are bound to be a lot more surprised at what you might find in the shadows than in the center of a room. So as to not be accidentally surprised by something, you can't put it in a corner, otherwise you might not see it coming. When Mahiro gets surprised by Mihari giving him the scarf gift, he used a common Japanese expression, Ippon Tolareta, to convey the meaning of someone having won one point over you. It comes from different competitive sports like Kendo and Judo, where you get one point, Ippon, when a technique lands on your opponent. Once again in this episode, the term Chunibyo was used, but this time to talk about Momiji trying to act cool. I already explained it in my video on the third episode, if you want more info about that. But in this episode, Mahiro also used Naoru, that was translated into Find Yourself. The Japanese meaning is of healing or to be cured, which links with the Pyo in Chunibyo that depicts it as an illness. When the group is praying at the shrine, and Momiji says that her sister is being greedy, she uses a term that comes from Buddhism, Bonno, that are worldly desires, or kleshas, for a more closer transliteration of the Sanskrit term. It can be seen a little bit like the seven deadly sins of the Christian religion. I also touch a bit more on that in my video for the 10th episode of Chainsaw Man. In this episode, there was also a lot of things surrounding the Japanese New Year holiday season, and since it will take a long time to talk about every single thing, and that it's probably not everyone that is interested in knowing all the details, I'll quickly talk about the things that I think are the most interesting ones, and in the future, I might make a specific video on that subject, since it's something that comes back in a lot of animes. So if you want to have more chance saying when it will come, you know what to do. Let's start with the Japanese name of New Year's Eve, that was omitted in the subtitles, O Misoka. It is the second most important day of the year in the Japanese culture, with New Year being the first one. To get a better understanding of its origin, let's first look at the different kanji used in the term. The first and last one are pretty simple, big and de. For the middle one, it's a pretty rare kanji that has a meaning associated with the state of the moon and when it disappears. Misoka comes from Japan's old calendar that was divided following the moon cycles, with the first day being the day of the new moon and the last day was where the moon disappeared. When Japan adopted the new and current calendar, even though it didn't really fit anymore with the new moon day, it became a synonym for the last day of the month. And when adding the big kanji before it, it refers to the last day of the last month, New Year's Eve. There was some abbreviations that were used when celebrating the new year, 
Kaidi and Mahiru said Akeome, which comes from Akemashite Omedetu, Happy New Year, and could also be viewed in a more literal sense as something like Death Wishes or the New Dawn of the Year. And Asahi and Miyo responded with Kotoyoro, which in turn comes from Kotoshimo Yoroshiku. The Yoroshiku part is a kind of expression that is a bit hard to translate directly in English, and if you have watched a lot of animes, you probably have a certain feel for the meaning, but in this context, it basically comes down to something like continue to treat me well this year. It could be understood by the context, but Osechi is a part of the New Year festivities, where you prepare a meal to eat with other people. It comes from Osechi Ryori, food cooking for the turning of seasons. Initially, the festival was one of five seasonal festivals of the Imperial Court in the Heian period, where they will make food using vegetables from the season, often accompanied with tofu, konyaku, and kombu, to present the good harvest of the season and bring gratitude to the gods. The meal comes in a stack of meal box with some rooms to follow. Originally, it was made with five layers, but nowadays most people go with a three layers version. So it shows even more that Kaede really went all in. You might have caught that we only see four layers, and that has to do with the rooms surrounding the preparation. Normally, you separate the layers with different types of food. The first one is for appetizers, the second one for grilled food, the next two can be interchanged, but one is for boiled or steamed food, and the other one is vinegared or pickled food. The fifth and last layer is kept empty and is used to reserve that place to be filled with the good fortune for the next year or season. So that's why we only see four boxes. For those wondering, the three layers version is putting the grilled and pickled food in the same layer and doesn't have an empty one. Also, like they talk about in this episode, a lot of the food has some meaning behind them. I won't go over all the possible food and their meaning, because there's a lot of them, but I just wanted to add that with the black beans, meaning to work hard, it has to do with a pun with mame, being the pronunciation for bean, but also for a word that can mean hardworking. During the Omikuji scene, which is a fortune telling thing that you see a lot in shrines, even though Asahi is asking a pretty obvious question about which is higher between Shokichi, small blessing, and Daikichi, great blessing, this is something that comes up a lot in animes and even in real life. Normally, the order would be Daikichi, Kichi, Chukichi, Shokichi, and Kyo. But sometimes Chukichi will be higher than Kichi, and sometimes there's even more levels of blessings. So in the end, it really depends on the different shrines and what they decided as their orders. The game that we see briefly Asahi and Momiji play is called Hanitsuki, and is a traditional Japanese game that is a bit similar to badminton. It became kind of a tradition to play during the New Year festivities. Another part of that tradition is that if you fail to hit the ball, the other person can draw something on your face, usually an X, like we can see on Asahi's face. Since last week, I found it really interesting to look into the artist behind the end card, I decided to do it again with this episode. This one was credited to Okori Nashio. It's a pen name for Yoshinari Ko, a veteran artist and animator active since 1990. He is the older brother of Yoshinari Yo, an animator, director, and storyboard artist currently working for Trigger. Ko is specialized in more realistic coloring and composition that can do really realistic movements that even makes his work often mistaken for CGI. In recent years, he worked on the animation and storyboard of the endings of Yamano Susume, on one of the Fate Grand Order movies. 
He did the monsters animation in Made in Abyss. Worked on Psychopath Season 3. The opening of Benkyo Dekinai. On Little Witch Academia. Kizumonogatari. White Album. And so much more. He also worked on a bunch of video games. He was the character and art designer for Valkyrie Profile. Work on a Ghost in the Shell game opening. On Art Night. And made a bunch of the animation for the Moth Love alternative visual novel. That's all I had for this episode. And you know what to do. Like this video to let me know if you want me to continue this series. Comment about the thing that you found the most interesting or surprising. And of course, subscribe if you want to have more chance seeing when I upload more stuff.